that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, always free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my
Good morning and welcome to our online service. I do hope that you've had a good week and that uh, you're managing to uh, survive the rigours of lockdown. Uh, I guess we're all looking forward to when these uh, restrictions are going to be eased and we can get back to some degree of normality. One of the things that uh, verses that God has been speaking to us through uh, uh, in this season has been Isaiah 43 verse 19, which says, God saying, behold, I'm doing a new thing. And it's just really interesting to try and sense what God's doing at this time. I think there are three things that have stood out to me over, over the last few weeks. The first one is kindness. There's been an outbreak of kindness. People are being kind to one another. And that really is something of the heart of God. I, I love this quote that I read. Small things done with great love change the world. Or kindness is love in work clothes. I just love that and I just love that expression of God. We think of God as majestic and mighty but we often forget to think that God is kind and kind towards us. The second word that uh, really struck me and, and none of us could miss this at all at these over these last few weeks is justice and it's been so encouraging seeing folks concerned enough to speak up against injustice especially some of the racial inequality that we've seen and witnessed of late and that's very alive sadly still in this country and it's encouraging because many of us have been silent for far too long and we worship a God that's a God of love but he's also a God of justice and and the, and the third thing that has really struck us and particularly us here at St John's uh, over the last few weeks is and I've just been blown away it's, it's, it's generosity I was blown away by the generosity of folks in our congregation as we gave to Postle Park and raised over £17,800 for that community there. And uh, we'll be telling you in a, in, a, in a few weeks' time of another significant gift that we've received, which has allowed us to continue to plan and move forward as a church. So I'm just so grateful for your generosity, but I'm also grateful because it actually represents who God is. We worship a God that's generous. I'll be giving more details over the next few weeks of our plans for coming out of lockdown and uh, and plans in particular of how we're going to maybe begin to meet in smaller groups as we're allowed to meet in, in, in larger numbers and two and threes and as we're allowed to begin to move inside. Uh, we've got plans so that we can move, move in and uh, meet in several groups uh, uh, around the place and plans um, will be coming out in the next few weeks and I'll be explaining that to you and, and just catching you up with some of our thinking which of course is um, uh, dictated by the, the the government's policy and finally that um, uh, this is a, a notice particularly for the members and I just want to draw your attention to the weekly newsletter which is emailed out every week I do hope you read it there's lots of good stuff in there and this week there's a there's a vlog that I particularly want to draw your attention to by Alan Staff he's giving us some important information concerning our plans at St John's for the future uh, that, that, that as well as a proposal to approve uh, and appoint Stuart Aitken as a pastor Please do watch it. You'll be receiving a letter through the post or through email, but please do watch it. And please do feel free, feel free to feed back either to Alan Staff or myself. These are certainly challenging times, and, but I'm so encouraged that God is still at work. And I know that he will be at work in our service today. And I always look forward to the lovely feedback that I get after all the services is when we when we put them up the feedback from people about how God has touched their lives and I do hope that as you experience God speak to your experience his presence where you are this morning that you will feed that back that you will let us know what's going on and what God's doing in your lives uh, it's such an encouragement so please email or message me and let me know what's been going on let's just pray now as we begin our service Father, thank you that we worship a wonderful, loving, kind, just and generous God. And Father, as we meet together, although we're far apart in different homes right across this region, Father, I want to pray this morning, we will know something of your kindness, of your justice and of your generosity touching our lives. Father, that you'll be present with us where we are. Holy Spirit, will you come? Will you invade our homes? Will you bring the presence of Jesus to us wherever we are? For we are sat in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to the church channel. How are you? Good to see you there. This week we will be looking at Jesus when he makes a claim, I am the way, the truth and the life. But before we get into that, let's hear our church news. If you want to do the church news song, send in your submissions to admin at stjohnsonlethgo.org. Now it's been a slow week here in the St John's newsroom, but there's just a few things we'd like to tell you. Kieran Campbell, one of our own, is working for the Bethany Christian Trust in Edinburgh at the Old Waverley Hotel. Now he works with the homeless in this capacity and because of COVID-19, his normal shelter has been closed and they had to move into this hotel. But they need some supplies and the supplies that they need will be listed here. And if you would like to donate any of these products to this great cause for these homeless people, then please do so on Tuesday between 10 and 2 at Union Road. Ruth McNinch will be there, she will socially distance, pick up the stuff that you have dropped off and then it will make its way to Kieran which will help the homeless people later on this week. Also next week we want to hear from you guys about the films and the series on Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever it is that have been keeping you going over lockdown. We want you to send in a photo of you standing beside your TV or posing or acting out something that happens in one of the programs. Just send in your submissions of the show that has been keeping you sane throughout lockdown. Now there's one tiny caveat. We would love you to send them into admin at stjohnsdownlithgo.org. Now I have been lenient. I have been lenient. I have been accepting stuff through WhatsApp, my own personal phone, by carrier pigeon, etc, etc. But this week, so we don't miss out people, we're going to be quite strict and say that you have to send it in to admin at stjohnsdownlithgo.org for you to make it in the film. And if you say, oh, just a wee sneaky one, then I'll go, oh, just uh, fire it on admin at stjohnsdownlithgo.org, please. And that's all the news we have time for, apart to say thank you for the overwhelming feedback of uh, you guys being supportive of me starting my online driving school. And also the great news to say that the Allen staff Doovie set will be ready in time for the shops reopening. It's just brilliant news. If you want to do the church news song, send in your submissions to admin at stjohnsonlethgo.org.
Now our learning streams for this season have just come to an end. There was around 15 people that went through the Deeper Into Daniel series with Douglas Britton which finished just a couple of weeks ago and this week the prayer course finished with Shannon and David as they led through an eight week course about Pete Gregg's resource, the prayer course. Here is some feedback from some of the members of the prayer course as they talked about the things that he had learned about prayer during this time. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. This then is how you should pray. Yeah, just to say we've, we've really enjoyed the course. Uh, we found it clear, informative, engaging. Um, very helpful, encouraging each other in our breakout group. Our Father in Heaven. I've really enjoyed the whole course. Um, I think the particular parts that I've enjoyed are the, the bit where we talked about contemplative prayer and using the Lectio Divina um, and just getting deeper into that kind of method of prayer. That's been really encouraging for me and using um, scripture to pray as well. Praying, praying back the Psalms to God, I found has been really helpful and it's been really encouraged me in my prayer life, I think, over these last few weeks. So I really, really enjoyed the course. It's been well worth doing. Hallowed be your name. I found I've prayed more and I've joined two Barony Zoom prayer things, the Wednesday night and the Sunday evening, which I don't know if I would have done if it wasn't in Zoom, but maybe one day I'll be brave enough. Your kingdom come. Learning to, to listen more than just pray and talk and taking time to stop and listen. <laughs> All will be done. It's been great um, getting to know new people in our breakout groups and mm. um, I'd love to do it again because there's just so much to learn um, that you could do it again and learn more. But I think one of the one things that um, I took most from it was in week two and was these four steps um, for prayer and it's P for pause, R for rejoice, A for ask and Y for yield. On earth as it is in heaven. I love the way that the videos were quite conversational and they felt very, um, very responsive and um, an easy way to get little bits from and not to feel that, um, that you had to have a particular formula, but that prayer could be a very individual thing. Give us today our daily bread. I enjoyed just getting to know um, you people and um, having the time to share with each other. Whereas at church you're often quite busy. And I think I've been trying to do the pause thing of the prayer a bit more, not just rush into prayer, but just maybe pause for a few seconds. And forgive us our debts. But really to share a prayer journey with other people. And it's just it's really good to be just in that, particularly in the breakout sessions. As we also have forgiven our debtors. It's been a very good sort of journey of different aspects of prayer. And I think there's a whole lot of richness to go back to and it's helped me reignite my daily prayer time so that's been great. I've loved that um, we can just access it from home and Pete's been so down to earth in the videos just making it really accessible for everyone and I think just just renewed excitement just in our you know that this is about a fr you know friendship with Jesus. And lead us not into temptation. This was like the first time I'd ever really um, led a course in a church setting so um, it was actually really really fun it was way more fun um, and less pressure than I ever thought it would be um, and I think that's because I just had a really great team who were always like willing to share and um, really kind of brought their own experiences and parts of their own relationship with Jesus and um, their connection with God that um, I've learned so so much not just from the videos but actually from getting to share with my group it's obviously been a tough eight weeks, um, not because I've had to do this course, but because life has been has shaken up quite a bit. The the pause, but I completely agree with sort of like taking that time and just sitting and dwelling and, and refocusing. But deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Now in line with our verse from the season, Behold, I am doing a new thing, based on Isaiah 43, Willie Morrison has wrote a new song. So we'll hear Willie's song, and then after that, we'll hear a verse for the day, and then into Alan Staff's preach. Mercy is so great that 
you disregard our weakness It leads us to a new light Forever changed by you You take away our cares and doubt And fears about tomorrow You are the way, the truth, the lie Lord, your goodness is so great You call us to your presence With promise of a new life Forever spent in you You lead us to the Father By knowing of your closeness The way, the truth, the light. You are the way, the truth, the light. Forever we will follow you. Open. But your goodness is so great You call us to your presence With promise of a new life Forever spent with you You lead us to the Father By knowing of your closeness You are the way, the truth, the light. You are the way, the truth, the light. Forever we will follow you. Open up the Father's door. Lord, your mercy is so great That you disregard our weakness It leads us to a new life Forever spent with you You take away our cares and doubts And fears about tomorrow you are the way, the truth, the life. Jesus said these words in John's Gospel 1 to 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you myself that you also may know where I am. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would also known my Father. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does this work. Believe me. 
that I am the Father and that the Father is on me, or else believe on the account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me and will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Good morning, St. John's. Um, I hope you've been enjoying this series on who Jesus is. And this morning we have the opportunity to look at uh, one of the most famous of scriptures from John 14. We join the disciples and Jesus just at the close of what we've come to call the Last Supper. It is chaos out there. Judas has uh, run off, going to apparently betray Jesus. Uh, Peter has been uh, told that he's going to deny Jesus, Peter of all people, and uh, the rest of the disciples are sort of milling around and Jesus is going about saying things like he's going to die, uh, he's going away, he's going to leave them, um, he's, he's going to a place and, and preparing something. And the disciples, I'm fairly sure, are thinking, where is this place then? Um, you know, you've not told, told us about it, some sort of secret place. I think they're looking at some sort of geographical place that, that maybe Jesus has got a, a bolt hole. Um, so I've got a lot of sympathy with Thomas when, when he kind of turns around uh, in a sort of duh moment and, and says, Lord, we don't know where it is you're going. So, so how can we know the way? And Jesus turns to him and makes this astonishing statement. He said, Thomas, I am the way and you know me. I am the truth. I am the life. At which point, all of the critics of, 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 uh, of our faith come tumbling in saying, whoa, that's, uh, that's a bit restrictive, isn't it? Only one way. Um, that, that's a bit exclusive. Uh, you know, surely a reasonable God would, uh, would allow lots of, way, lots of negotiation, different ways uh, in. What about all these other religions? Um, and there's a real problem with this because clearly, they're not actually getting what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is not describing a religion or a set of um, ro rules and regulations or a way to make so to allow some people to get to God faster than, than others uh, or to climb higher in the hierarchy than others. Jesus clarifies it in, in this whole business of, of an, an unambiguous statement about who he is. That's all he's saying. This is who I am. And in doing so, he clarifies what he means about coming to the Father. Let's unpack all of that a little bit. So the early church referred to themselves as a people of the way or the people of the way because it's human nature, isn't it, to try to codify um, beliefs into a set of instructions and rules because that makes it easier to teach and communicate. So the disciples... Uh, were looking for a, a map or a path. They were disciples, after all. They, they followed the teachings of Jesus. And um, I don't think we're so different to them today. We too want clarification and roadmaps. You know, look, coming out of lockdown, how's it going to, how's it going to uh, last? When's it going to end? You know, um, what do you have to do? What can't you do? What's it going to look like when it's finished? We want to, we want to have clarity. We want to either have control ourselves or at least know that somebody else is in control and we're prepared to give them that uh, responsibility. But Jesus isn't talking about uh, this kind of linear thinking, this sort of idea about what is in the future. Jesus says, I am the way. Not a way, not a pathway, not a route to the Father. I, I am the way. More like a gate than, than, than a road. Um, Psalm 119 I find very, very helpful because you know, it, it's, it talks about your word being a lamp to my feet. If you've ever walked in the dark, in the pitch black, with just a torch, just a small torch, you'll know that actually it doesn't help you really... Um, have an idea of what's in front of you or, or, or where you're going. All it does is provide this little bit of illumination around your feet to stop you falling in the ditch. And, and I think that's the essence of what, what Jesus is saying here. 
this this isn't something about you know here is a, here is a route that I'm laying out ahead for you. Jesus is saying right here, right now, I am your way. I am the way. And we see that in um, the, the the story of the, um, the the thief who was crucified with him. No long history of Christian service. No process of getting there. Simply accepting Jesus as Lord was enough, even in that last moment of life. So there's no special merit in our building obstacles for ourselves to find favour with God. Jesus is the way to the Father simply because Jesus and the Father are one. That's the claim that Jesus made. I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Of course, the only way to get to the Father is to get through the Son. That, that is, is not a statement of exclusivity. It's a statement of logic. Jesus then goes on to say, I am the truth. And when Jesus stands before Pilate um, and talks about bringing the truth and speaking the truth, Pilate is absolutely predictable in his response. He just says, ah, Jesus, but, but what is truth? It's just straight out of the post-millennium handbook, isn't it? Uh, we, we love to argue. We love to be able to debate. We don't like truth, absolute truth. It's a really old fashioned concept, isn't it? We worship freedom of thought, and freedom of self-expression. Pilate attempts to draw Jesus into what was a national pastime for the uh, Greeks and Romans, which is a, a, a debate, public debate. Uh, Jesus is having none of it. You, know, you want to know the truth? I am the truth. It's kind of a conversation killer, isn't it, really? Jesus is not a truth. He is the truth. God is the centre of all things, the ultimate truth. And we read in John 1 that the word became flesh and blood and lived amongst us. God the Father, truth, became flesh and blood, lived amongst us as Jesus. Astonishing stuff. The truth. And Jesus then goes on and describes himself as the life. And in this, I'm going to suggest that he's also invoking the, the Holy Spirit. I know that the concept of the Trinity wasn't uh, codified until you know, a couple of hundred years later. But uh, we see the three parts of the, of the Trinity um, present at Jesus' baptism. And I believe we're also hearing Jesus speak in these terms, this, this sort of three part um, aspect of God, three persons of God. Um, in Genesis 1, we see the, we hear the spirit as bringer of life, brooding over the oceans, creating. Um, and Jesus is identifying himself with that spirit, that life, the life which God gives to us. And of course, Jesus also brings that life. He allows the life that we were made for through his sacrifice, but most of all through his resurrection, because he's like saying, you want proof of all of this? I'm going to rise from the dead. That's proof. Hopefully that's enough for you. Um, I've known an awful lot of people who really struggle with with, uh, with the Christian faith because they, they don't get the sort of different aspects and you need all of these things. Um, you need the way, you need you need this life that Jesus, Jesus lays out for us because we are told we must become like him. But you need the truth. This ultimate truth that is God the Father, the, the justice. And you need the creativity and the life affirming and, and power uh, that, that goes with the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And those things together are what God has brought to us and God has given to us. Uh, and it's an amazing thing. When I first came to know, um, to, came to faith uh, a long time ago now. I'd rejected the idea of a God because it was, you know, God was uh, a bit too esoteric. And, and, uh, and anyway, I didn't want anybody judging what I was doing. Didn't like that idea. Um, I'd rejected the teachings of Jesus because I thought, well, nobody can you know, live up to that. It's impossible. Um, and, uh, but, but then I met the Holy Spirit uh, in power. Uh, and I realised that you have to take the whole package. <laughs> if, if, I, if I understood that the Holy Spirit was there and if I experienced his life and, and life changing power, then I take the whole lot. And I think that's what Jesus is asking of us today. 
I can reject, I could reject the offer of love from the Son. I could deny the authority of God. I couldn't deny what the Spirit was speaking to my heart. You know, one of the words for, uh, one of the names given to Jesus was, was Emmanuel, and it just means God with us. And that's brilliant. Do you know, it, it's fantastic. That is what Jesus is saying here. He is God with us. And it leaves us with a question, I suppose, that we all have to answer. If Jesus is God, what does that mean to us, each one of us? If Jesus' claims are true, what does it mean to each one of us? As he said to Peter, who do you say I am? He's asking that of you today. Who do you say Jesus is? service is now coming to a close and we have heard so much from Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. Let's just finish with this reading as Becca and Sam lead us out with some socially distanced worship again from the Union Road car park. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have known me, you know the Father also. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, folks. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me into his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh,
Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me into his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child.
Righteous, free. 